and viewers. Uh, I'm just here to welcome on behalf of the mayor, uh, MEC Maokwe, the executive uh, of the Free State uh, the province, uh, the chairperson of SALGA, and all mayor speakers, HODs, and their students from all over the Free State. Uh, no, this morning, I think we're going to listen to the MEC accounting to the nation, together with a panel of students who are buzzer holders of the Free State Provincial Government. You'll remember in the last four years, five years, since 2009, education was prioritized as number one in South Africa. And as the Free State Province, we'd like to thank uh, the President and the ANC government for having prioritized education. And we know that as a province, we were known in the past for being a milli, 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 milli a province. Uh, we were taken as backward. Uh, we never focus on key strategic uh, subjects. Uh, key strategic in terms of skills development and e economic stimulation of this province. So MEC Maho will talk more about what we have done in terms of uh, priority number one, education. Um, for instance, uh, I'm sure he will tell us that in this uh, four years, we have taken 492 students uh, to Cuba. Uh, just doing medicine. I think it's 200 to Cuba plus, so in all it's 492 students who are studying medicine. And some of them are almost competing. We have taken 307 because we are an agricultural province. We have also prioritized agriculture. It will tell you more about accounting. And I'm sure if possible, he can even break down per each town in the Free State, how many students have benefited. And I'm happy to, to say we have, since 2009, visited all universities in the country. We have visited Cuba. We have visited our, our students in China. Next year, we are taking uh, students in, uh, to Turkey as well as China. China is prepared to take almost 200 at the beginning of January and TAKE is prepared to take engineers. And I think we are ready. We have our team presently in TAKE and Cuba preparing for 2014. And with these few words, I want to say we will listen to the MEC and the panel of students. Uh, we can use any language, or as Andy Freistadt, as Mensevel Pratt, Onskan Pratt, and as well Arbat Labua, Labua, Masfunu Koluma, Zao Koluma. I want to bus mail, Bafun Goose, or what is it in an amplage, Yabok. And uh, the MEC for Education now, uh, Mr. Tate Mahwe, is uh, coming up uh, onto the stage uh, to share his thoughts with us. And I'm going to tell you that uh, a lot of people know him in this part of the world as Mr. Maths. And we're going to be finding out why maths is so important to him and also some of those initiatives. So uh, let's uh, hear from the MEC and uh, see what course he's plotted uh, for this province going forward and what hope he's been giving to the students. MEC. Yeah, well, thanks, Peter. Um, let me also pass my regards to my colleagues, the Premier, um, the students who are here, the beneficiaries of this program. I think, uh, as the Premier have said, in the past uh, four and a half years, we have been extremely busy. And I think these uh, engagements that we have been having in the past four years are not engagements that will actually improve the performance of the economy of the free state only, but we understand that we are doing this for 
the whole country. So the ANC in its manifesto said that education must be an apex priority, meaning that all of us had to work together to ensure that uh, the human resource, which is the asset for, the, for any country, uh, the human resources are an asset for any country, is actually developed. And therefore, we have not seen ourselves as a department of education, as people who are only interested up to metric. But we then said, what happens to these children post metric? And the first intervention I think we did as the executive council was to centralize the, the budget, the, 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 the uh, buzzary function. In the past, all departments had their own small little buzzary programs. And then in 2009, when we came in, we took a decision that said, let us do away with the small little, uh, uh, small little uh, buzzary programs running all over the show. We must make sure that now all the buzzaries are uh, centralized in the Department of Education. That was one of the first major decisions that we made. And ladies and gentlemen, when we started in 2009, the number of buzzaries that were there, that were provided by the provincial government, was only 129. Today, as I'm talking to you, we've got a buzzer program that covers 7,521. I must say that uh, the first year of 2010, uh, the Executive Council took a very, very brave decision. And that decision was to increase our buzzer program by 2,000 buzzers. So in 2010, we gave new 2,087 buzzers to the value of 131 million rands. We then increased that program to about, uh, uh, as I said, 7,521. But included in this program was, as the Premier was saying earlier, uh, 190 students that we are sponsoring directly, plus 10 students that have won the bursary through national. So 200 students are in Cuba uh, preparing to be doctors to come and heal South Africans. And if you look at this buzzer program that we've been running, you'll realize that, as the Premier said, medicine is 492. So 200 in Cuba and about 300 in South Africa. And these students are in all universities, not only the University of the Free State, but in, in VETS, in UCT, in all universities. And they are here, they'll talk for themselves. And when you look at the infrastructure, and the challenges that we have in our country. We have also prioritized engineering, so different fields of engineering, chemical engineering, mechanical engineering, and so on. And uh, in these 7,760 students are studying various fields of engineering across South African universities. In accounting, we have 422 students and look at this one, we took a risk about it. Uh, we took eight students to study aviation. And in the panel here, one of the students who have just completed or just about to complete, and wonderfully, she's a lady. She'll be part of the panel here. <laughs> so lo and behold, one day you'll be flown by this pilot from Castell, a small town in the Free State. And for pharmacy, we've got 37 students. For agriculture, 307. Uh, economics, 70. And education. Everybody said children are not, or students are not interested in education anymore. The number is the ones that we are giving alone not Funza Lushaka, the ones that we are giving alone 
is 1,046. So I'm secured in terms of teachers. We also want to send a signal that uh, when we were given this budget program, one of the insistence of the Executive Council and the Premier was that uh, we must ensure that we touch each and every small town. Each and every town in the Free State has, has actually achieved uh, as, as a buzzer holder. If you take a small town like Ornelia, for an example, we've got six buzzer holders there. If you take a town like Dennisville, we've got 29 buzzer holders. I can go on and on and on and on. Helbron has got 51. Codepiece has got 20. And all the small towns have got uh, some buzzer holders. But if you go to big towns, if you go to Kronstadt, Kronstadt alone has got 278 buzzer holders in the past five years. In Fuljons Kron, they've been so lucky. They've got 109 buzzer holders from the province of the Free State. <laughs> if you take the big towns, you take Velcom for an example, 655 buzzer holders that we have given in the past five years. If you take Mangaung, the metro, they've got 2,096 buzzer holders just for Mangaung. So we have, we, have, we have been giving, making sure that uh, we cover every town. Just for an example, I don't know if some people may not even know this town, called uh, Oppermans Hronde. It's a small little town somewhere in the corner of nowhere. Right? They also have got five buzzer holders. So we have made sure that we cover everybody. And then uh, there's a small town that some of us don't even know where it stays. It's called Walter Kluov, right? This Walter Kluov also has got three buzzer holders. So you can see that uh, we tried to cover everybody else. So that, that is our per town allocation. So every town has been covered. The Premier has spoken a little bit about uh, uh, the international buzzer allocations. We are actually going to take up this, we are taking up this challenge because there's a lot of buzzeries outside there internationally. And we have already, as the Premier have said, where we are sending students to Turkey. Uh, we have gone to Turkey ourselves, have seen the university that we'll be sending our children to. I must also emphasize that every time when we send students to a particular country, we as the Executive Council go first to go and check whether uh, with that country really our children will be able to survive in that culture. And that's what we did to Cuba. Uh, for a very long time, Free State has not been sending a student to Cuba. But when we send them, there was a delegation led by late Comrade Facing Guben Tombi, and I was part of that delegation. We went to Cuba, we checked all the universities, we tasted what they eat, we went to even the social occasions, football matches, nightclubs, everything, just to check whether our children will be able to make it there. And that is why we were so happy, because when we came back, before we let them go to Cuba, we, 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 we had a meeting with them, told them our own experiences about this country, and many of them were very, very excited. So they went to Cuba, understanding the conditions there. And I think that uh, that is why, when there was a strike, I phoned uh, some of the students here, there in Cuba, and I asked them, are they part of this, uh, uh, people don't want to be doctors? And they confirmed to me, no. We knew when we came to Cuba what to expect. And therefore, we are not part of that. And our students from the Free State have not been part of them. So we have also been to China. Uh, we have, I've been to universities in China, Nanchang universities, and many difficult names to pronounce. But I've been there, and I've seen the state, I've seen what they eat, and we have tasted that, and we think that uh, we can send our children to that country. In fact, I've also seen that already in South Africa, there's a lot of students who are already applying for medicine in China. So already students themselves are beginning to take up that initiative. What do we do when these children have completed? Because that's another challenge. 
Many of them will tell you, now I'm completing an NAS time. What do we do? Where am I going to work? So they go through a, a process that we call internship in government. Uh, and I must openly say that our internship, we can't take everybody, but we ensure that most of our students go through our own program of internship. Those who can't make it, we engage with our business partners, the private sector, the banks, to absorb them. And especially those in engineering, because we've got a huge program with the Public Works Department. Therefore, many of them are actually taken by uh, professional companies and are given this uh, uh, internship. So, in the past five years, we have taken children uh, or students uh, under this internship program. About the number of them is 1,194. And it has costed, costed us three million rands over the past four years. So you can see that the numbers every year. In 2009, we only had 89 students who came for the internship. 2010, there were 285. 2011, 291. 2012, 416. Uh, 2013, 113. I must say that uh, I'm very, very passionate about this internship program. And those who have been intense, intense in the Department of Education have been very, very lucky because in the past four years, we have absorbed all of them. All of them who have taken part in the internship have been employed in the Department of Education. One of the things that is important, uh, we, we also engage some of these young people. I think there are two students that we took to Germany. Uh, so that now, after graduating as uh, civil engineers, mechanical engineers, we took them to Germany because, as you know, uh, Germans are, are very good in this technology. But uh, we took them there, and they came. Uh, they are now, I'm told, they've invented some uh, instruments in the Department of Public Works, and I'm sure some of them will demonstrate uh, their inventions in this, in, in this hall. But I think that's what we want. We want people to be engineers, not only to start looking for work, but to start creating that work and being innovative. And that's what we are beginning to get as a free state government. The other program that we do is a program of learnerships. Uh, I won't talk a lot about it, but I think it is important to state that uh, we also target the young people who don't have metric so that we can give them learnerships in IT, in construction, and so on. And the numbers that uh, we have engaged are as follows. In 2009, we had 124 learners who uh, uh, were part of the intensive program of the provincial government of the Free State. In 2010, we took 724 learners. In, yes, we made lab hands. Uh, in 2011, we took 530. In 2012, we took 1,945. <laughs> and this year, we have taken 370. So you can see that we also try to say what else can be done for these other learners. The other program that we are running successfully is that uh, the experiential training for those of you who are at the technical level. Uh, we have got, we coordinate this program so that now children should not qualify, do S4, and not have chance to do practicals. So we coordinate that program, we engage the private sector, we have engaged SASOL, we have engaged quite a number of other companies, including the banks. And in this uh, work, obviously, we have had a lot of partners, uh, but I think we need to just to mention that uh, uh, the small business people, the small black business people in the free state have been extremely supportive on this program. Many of them have taken out their own money to support children to go to school. <laughs> Many of them have also taken these children. You know I've got a set of uh, engineering companies that I know. Every time the student comes and says that I need experiential training, I just pick up the phone and say, I've got a student for you, and they have always uh, supported us. So thank you very much for that kind of uh, support. Uh, 
I also must also mention that uh, the Department of Higher Education and Training has been extremely supportive through the career guidance program, through the uh, bursary program that we have actually unleashed with them. Various CITAS also have helped, have made it uh, easier for us to work. The Department of Education and other departments, public works and so on, they've come together to set up a career, career guidance task team that is helping our children, especially those who are in grade eight and nine, to know what uh, uh, opportunities to follow. So ladies and gentlemen, as we close, we want to say that uh, we want to thank everybody because maybe let's first thank the taxpayer, especially those who are paying tax around the country to say one thing that we are doing, we are making sure that now your tax money is used appropriately. We are ensuring, because these children are going to work for you as, as the taxpayers. So we are making sure that you don't have to employ labor or to import labor from outside the country. You've got this labor inside, the, inside our country. Um, there is a lot of FET bursaries that we have also given. So we recognize the FETs as playing a very, very crucial role uh, working with the Department of Higher Education. Uh, this year, uh, even though we know that uh, Free State is going to do very well uh, in terms of the metric results, you know we have set up ourselves a target of 85, and after writing, I still feel that we are going to get 85, so you are all invited. Uh, so you are all invited uh, in January the 7th. Well done function. I think uh, we have been preparing because there are going to be so many people that we need to invite. I've been saying to the MEC for Finance, maybe we have to have uh, screens outside for those who will be sitting outside because there's going to be so many 100% schools this year that uh, they won't fit in one hall. And then lastly, we will... Uh, uh, be providing one more 500 bursaries uh, for this class of 2013. But we are working very hard. We have said that we want to increase this 500. This is 500 from government. We want to raise another 500 bursaries from the private sector. So some of you who are uh, decision makers, some of you who come from the free state, who are CEOs of big companies, if the free state needs you. We want you to give us one or two bursaries. I believe in all, if all companies in the stock exchange can give the free state one or two bursaries, we can have uh, all our children go to institutions of learning. And I think the last thing that uh, we want to, to summarize, as uh, the program director is telling me that to summarize, is that we want also to give you the number of graduates. Don't think we are just giving bursaries and people don't complete. In 2009, only 248 graduated. In 2010, 855 graduated. In 2011, 167 graduated. In 2012, 783 graduated. In 2013, we are expecting 1,184 to graduate. So, so I think that Free State, you can be proud of, self, of yourselves. You have done well. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, right, so that's a few words from the MEC for Education, Mr. Tate Mahwe. We're going to hear a lot more from him. He spoke about a lot of things. All of that still to come. Stay with us. Uh, don't go away.